today I'm going to talk to you about the meaning of the first fruit. The meaning or the significance of the first fruit, whichever way you want to write it down. So after, after that introduction, I want to go to the main text that I want to take on this evening, Exodus 23:19, the A part of it. The first of your first fruit of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. The Good News Translation renders that verse saying, each year bring to the house of the Lord your God the first grain that you harvest. The message translation. I'm just taking the first part of that verse. It says, bring the choice first produce of the year, the choice first produce of the year to the house of your God. This scripture introduces to us a phrase that is very commonly understood in the agricultural society that God was addressing in the days of the Bible. Today we are not, and so it bears explanation, some repetition, some exposition on what the first fruit means, and especially to its significance to us today, in our world today. But going back into the days of the Bible, first fruit is, these are the important things to know, is a free will offering separate from and in addition to the tithe that God's people were commanded to give. It's a free will offering. The, free, the first fruit, although commanded by God, is still classified as a free will offering. But it is something that is distinct and separate from and is something to be given in addition to the tithe. It is not the same as the tithe. It is something different from the tithe. Number two, the first fruit in the days of the Bible is a representation of the whole harvest. When you give the first fruit, that first fruit you give is in representation. It represents the whole harvest. Number three, it was an offering, again in the Old Testament times, that was required to be given to him from the earliest ripening fruits of any grain of fruit that is planted. It is, it is God's requirement that comes or is taken from the earliest. When you make a farm, whether it's of grain or any particular produce, the first part that ripens that you harvest, that is what is being referred to as the first fruit. It's almost the same thing, whichever way you say it, at whether it is for animals or for plants, even for humans. Uh, would you please give me ex Exodus chapter 13? The first two verses, Exodus 13. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, consecrate, the word consecrate here means separate to me. All the firstborn, whoever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of a man and beast. I said first and foremost that the first fruit is classified as a free will offering. But notice in this place the other side of it. God is not asking you to just bring it if you like. He is claiming it as his. If you notice in the, first, in the last line, both of man or beast, it is mine, meaning it belongs to me. Now, let's go to the 11th verse of the same cha chapter, Exodus 13. And it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you your, and to your fathers, and he gives it to you, that you shall set apart 
to the Lord all that open the womb, that is every firstborn that comes from, the, from an animal which you, you have. If it's an animal, the male shall be the Lord's. Let's go on. I want us to read to verse 15. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem, that means exchange for, or buy back with a lamb. Why? Because donkey is classified as an unclean animal that must not be sacrificed to God. But even then, God says, if it is the firstborn, it belongs to me. Redeem it, then you shall, but if you, if you choose not to redeem it, that means it's an unclean animal, God doesn't want to take it, and I'm not going to exchange it with anything. Then God said, neither will you have it, I will not, as I don't, as I don't have it, break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among your sons, you shall what again? Redeem, buy back with an animal. Next verse. So it shall be, when you begin to practice things like this, your children will ask you in time to come saying, what is this? What do you mean by this? Then you shall say to him, I want you to pay attention to what you should say. By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and of the firstborn of beast. It's as a result of that. Therefore, because of that, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons, I do what? If, if you don't mind, let's read this verse in the New Living Translation. Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go. So the Lord killed all the firstborn males. Let me ask you again, whether you are still with me. Why did Pharaoh, why did, um, Pharaoh lose all his firstborn? Because of his stubbornness to obey the instruction, let my people go. This is what happens to when people when they stubbornly reject or refuse to obey God. There are several warnings and plagues that followed, led to that. Not that God just woke up one day and did it. He had enough of chance to repent, but he didn't. God is not a wicked God. Please understand that. But when he refused because of his stubbornness, this happened. God killed all the firstborn males throughout the land of Egypt, both people and uh, animals. But that is why I now sacrifice all the firstborn males to the Lord. Notice he is not saying, that's why I came to this translation. I would have said, that is why I now redeem all the firstborn males. But he didn't say that. He said, but that is why I now sacrifice. In other words, even the firstborn males of the Israelites are now being sacrificed in theory. But in action, we bring an animal and exchange them. So if I don't exchange them in the eyes of God, they are still what? They are dead. I have to redeem it back. So when we bring the first fruit to God, that's basically causing a resurrection or taking back that which has already been sentenced to death or should have died. That's basically what the first fruit represents in that very place. Then fourthly, it is given before, before the entire harvest was uh, taken as a deposit or down payment guaranteeing God's blessings for the rest of the harvest. What I mean is this, the first fruit must be given before even the rest of the field is harvested. Now, that was how it was practiced in the days of the Bible. Today, in our world today, what is the significance? What does it mean to us? Now, listen. Let's go back. I want to just stop here and just go back out of my script to back to Genesis 4. When the first two sons of the first parents, Cain and Abel, decided to bring God an offering. 
Notice that prior to that time, there was no written down instructions that you and I can refer to. Why was it that one brought one kind of offering that was accepted, another brought another kind of offering that was rejected? Why was that? The, the, the impression here is that it must draw blood. Blood must be involved as a sacrifice when we do something. That is what God insists. Why? Because blood is always indicative of life. And whenever we bring something to God, we should, we should come with the acknowledgement of the fact that we are sinners, worthy of death, but is now coming to you with the awareness of the fact that you gave us life. And out of the life you have given to us, Anything and everything that this life produces, first and foremost, must belong to you. So we come with that acknowledgement of the fact that it is you that gave us this life, and everything this life produces should belong to you, come back to you. And that was why Abel's uh, sacrifice was accepted. In the case of Cain, he didn't give serious thought to that. He was generous. Remember, he brought his offering. The only aspect of the fact that he brought it in the arrogance of his, I produce this, God, uh, take this. It's like dashing somebody, you know, something. Like doing somebody a favor. I want you to know that whenever we approach God to give something to God, it, we must not come with that arrogance before God. Now, we know that throughout the Bible, God has used principles and practices to teach and reveal himself to us. And therefore, the pertinent question is, what is the teaching? What is the lesson? What are the importance, uh, important lessons to draw from this um, first fruit? Number one. You ready? The first lesson and the reason for our first fruits, the meaning of it today is, number one, is an acknowledgement that both we and all that we own belong to him. Both ourselves and all that we own belong to him. Got it? Number two, a declaration. It is a declaration also that he is the source of all we call our own and must be the first beneficiary of every blessing we receive. I'll take that again. The second lesson the first fruit re represents to us today is that it is a declaration that he is the source of all that we call our own and must be the first, he must be the first beneficiary of every blessing we receive. We receive it from you and that's why we're bringing it back to you. Freely have you received, freely give. Jesus Christ said, let's said later. Number three, Third lesson, the first fruit represents, it's a demonstration of our faith, trust, and dependence in his continued provision to meet our every need. The first fruit is a demonstration of our faith, our trust, and our dependence in his continued provision to meet our every need. That was why in my introduction I said it must be given before the full harvest. The first ripening fruit that we harvest is brought without waiting for the whole harvest to be taken. Man is very cunning. Satan comes, look, look but if I give the first harvest and I'm just harvesting, what if uh, I don't get anything serious again? If I have to give the first part of my uh, increase and my profit and my salary, and my, what if I don't get anything else? That is why the first fruit is a representation, a demonstration of your faith and your trust and your dependence that it is not the job, it's not the farm, it's not what you produce, you are not a king, but you are an able. You are, you are depending on his provision. Is that clear? And then number four, The first fruit is to secure 
for us the guarantee of his blessing upon the rest of the harvest for the year. A guarantee to secure the guarantee of his blessing upon the rest of the harvest. In the first five bo books of the Bible, the Pentateuch as they call it, this practice, this practice of giving God the first fruit is mentioned several times. In fact, in some cases, word, words for words repeated. For instance, let's look at, since we can easily cite it, Exodus 23, 19. Now, look at it. The similar, now, we have just read from um, Exodus 23, Exodus 13, the first two verses where God said, um, separate for me, consecrate for me the firstborn of every male, of every that opens every womb. In the 11th verse, the same thing is repeated. Notice again in Exodus 23, 19. Would you read with me, everybody, please, the first part of it. Ready? Go. That's what we have just read. Now, that is what we have read. That was our text. Now, let's go to Exodus 34, 26, 34, 26. Ready? Ready? Go. Read again. No, come on. They're not hearing you online. Come on. Let's read again. Go. The first... See, it's almost word for word. And it's God repeating over and over. If you, if you read the first five books, this instruction is again, again, and again, and again, and again repeated. Now, I believe the repetition is purposeful. It is not just somebody repeating himself. God does not want in the euphoria of getting a new job, in the euphoria of the massive profit you have made, the intake, in the euphoria of a harvest, a big harvest you made, you can, in our greed, we can just jump on in and start eating and forget the one who gives it to us. That is why he wants, to, he wants to, this thing driven into us, written right now, so that we do not forget. That is the purpose of repetitively saying the same thing again and again and again, the human nature has a way of immediately jumping into something when once we see it, and again, forgetting about or seem to forget about it. And that's why I think he continues with it. Now, somebody might want to wonder, said, but you didn't finish the verse, the second part of the verse, the remaining part of the verse of our text, that also is there, coming out with every other repetitive something like this. You shall not boil a young goat in his mother's milk. Uh, why do you leave that part out? Well, as a Bible teacher, I, do, I, will, I never want to leave people in doubt of anything when I'm teaching the Bible. But if you're asking that question, or if, you are, if you seem to be wondering, the simple, straightforward answer is this. It's because it does not concern our text or what we are teaching about. But if you would like to know, I want you to know that today, as I speak right now in Israel, as we have a new, they new, have a new prime minister, my good friend, Benjamin Netanyahu, today in Israel, they still practice it. What it means is, if, this, if in, in Israel, in any part of their governed world, in any restaurant, for instance, you go there and you order a meal and they serve you and that meal contains meat, then don't expect them to serve you in that same meal, coffee or tea that contains milk. That means you have just boiled the young the meat in the mother's uh, milk. So I said, "What is that? I don't know. I have my own ideas. As Bible scholars of different people have their different uh, reasons why God made this. Decision. I think number one, it is to instinctively build into His children the idea of not to be wicked, but to be sensitive." The, the, the actual rendition of it is don't boil a, the baby of an animal in the milk of the mother. That means you kill the mother and to extract the milk and then boil the, um, um, the baby in the milk. That is, 
Even if a chicken is wicked. You know, so that is a sense of it. Others, well, what I, uh, Bible scholars might interpret it differently in the sense that they said, well, it's for continuity. If you kill the um, mother, allow the baby to leave, uh, basically. So it could be for a reason. But for my, my own tonight, it's because it does not directly concern the subject. That's why I'm leaving it out. I want to be very clear about that. Amen? Okay. So, let's go. What do we do with the first fruit? When we do our first fruit, it's important to do it right. Therefore, these are some practices that are very central to doing it right. Number one, when the first fruit is to be given, it should be taken to God's house. According to our text, Exodus 23, 19, as we have read. And again, repeated in same Exodus 34, 26. On one occasion, 2 Kings 4, 42, in the time of Elisha, a man brought first fruit to the man of God directly. But if you read our text, let's go back to our text again. Exodus 23, 19. He said, the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into what? The house of God. That is the church today, you might say. So notice, in this case, he said, bring it to the house of God. Remember, the house in Israel, unlike today where we have churches at every corner. In Israel as a nation, there was only one temple. And until then, it came a period of time when there was the, the dispersion when God scattered them, then whenever the number of Greek, uh, Jews come together in a particular place, they were now allowed to establish a synagogue. But then every ma main festival, they will all migrate to Jerusalem because there was only one house. So God was saying, take it to the house. So we know what is being meant to. But in this case, it means every one of us that are worshippers of God have our house, the house. In other words, take it to the church the house you belong to. I think I want to make that very clear. But like I said, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42, a man brought it straight to the man of God, Elisha, at that time. Meaning that today, as far as I am concerned, if I want, must not do violence to the scripture, it must be clear that people, worshippers should be free to either, when it comes to the first fruit, worshippers should be free to take it directly to the house of God and together with other offerings give it as they give other offerings or they should be free to give it directly to the man of God or the prophet or the pastor or whatever they call them. The apostle in some cases. Directly to the man or together with other offerings to the church. Number two, central so to the practice, we realize that fact that Leviticus 23 verse 10 the instruction is that the first fruit be delivered to the priest. Keyword, the priest. Now, in Israel, whenever the word the priest is talking about, it's a reference to the high priest. There are several priests, but the priest, when it says the priest, we're talking about the high priest. That is the one in charge. Speak to the children of Israel, Leviticus 23.10. And say, when you come into the land of, in the land which I give to you and to reap his harvest, that you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. So the first fruit is to be brought to this. I'm just trying to make it very clear enough for you. Number three, that the first fruit shall apply to all, every kind of business a man is engaged in. It's a the practice should apply to every practice. Remember, whether it was fruit, whether it was particular produces, whether it was man or animal, the first fruit is being claimed here. Now, Deuteronomy 18.4 will, I think, make it clear for us, that dimension of it. It is not only to agriculturists, but to every practice that we are, our children of God, are in, involved in. The first fruit of your grain and your new wine your oil, your first of the flesh of the, 
of your sheep or whatever business you are involved in. So every um, endeavor that a man is engaged in, that first fruit applies to it. Today we are salaried people or we do personal businesses or uh, personal practices. The first part of the gain that come to you in any year, that's what we read. Five, number five, is it number four or number five? Number four, the first fruit when being offered must be accompanied with worship. This is very important. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Let's look at verse 2, okay? You shall take some of the first of um, all, all produce of the ground, okay? Now, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving you and put it in where again? Now, and take it to... Now, the only reason why I brought you to you is the word, the place. The place. Say that word. Okay, verse 3. I'm, I'm going to run now. Go to verse 3. Run with me. And you shall go to the, the one. Number one, the place. That means you are taking the first fruit to a place. The place. Not any and any place. So if you must give the first fruit, do it right. You take it to your church and you take it to the one. Okay? And then in that same verse, listen to this, you can take it to the one I, that is the priest in, that shall be in those days. And second, third thing you will do is you should uh, say, say, declare to him before the priest. You must be willing to. Let's jump to verse 5. In verse 4 says the priest will receive the first fruit from your hand. And then verse 5, and you shall answer and say before the Lord your God. And then all that you are supposed to say is written down. My father was a Syrian. I was ready to perish. But then God came to me. Died on the cross, delivered me, redeemed me, and this is who I am. And everything I own today came from him. Verse 10, you, it begins to say, And now, verse 10, Behold, I have brought the what? First fruit of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. The acknowledgement is it came from you, Lord, and I have brought it. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and then do what again? Worship him. Three or four things, the five things. Number one, you take the first fruit to the place and to the one and then you have to say and then we are told, what, what is that? Am I, am I supposed to say? Because we are jumping through verses. A declaration of the fact that I was lost sinner, but I was redeemed by the sacrifice of God. I belong to you. It's a declaration and affirmation of all the things we have said. The meaning of the first fruit. And then because of that, you worship him. It's something with which you worship the Lord. Is that clear? To, I don't know whether that is clear to us right now. Okay. So we can... Uh, move forward. Let's, let's take this one. Nehemiah chapter number 10, 35. These are practices that must be done together with the offering so that we can do it right. Number one, like I said, it must be taken to the house of God or directly given to the man of God. Number two, it must be delivered directly to the high priest. The one in charge, you can give it to the pastor in charge or give it together like the awesome offerings. I think that's the same thing I said, uh, repeating it myself again. Shall apply to every aspect, form of business or livelihood that a man is engaged in and then must be accompanied with worship and then must sometimes be offered yearly, sometimes even more than yearly. That's what Nehemiah 10, 35 says. And Remember that the Nehemiah was of the, belonged to the set of people that was taken captive and had left Israel for a long time. But being God-fearing man, he is ready to come back, 
restore the same, the good order of worship and to do the right thing. And so Nehemiah right now here is declaring, and he said, we made ordinances to bring the first fruit of the ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all fruit of all trees year by year. So it's supposed to be an annual thing. But let us say that you are a producer, a gardener of a vegetable or some any kind of material that sometimes you produce twice. Like onion or something or rubbish. It doesn't last for sometimes for long. I mean, you harvest it and the next circle again in, this, in the same year, you produce again. Then every circle of planting and harvesting, the first fruit, the first ripe fruit is given. That's what it means. So, but generally, it should apply annually from this scripture. I'm not the one saying it. And we'll bring it to the house of the Lord. Is that okay? Now, Second Chronicles 31.5. That is another practice. It must be promptly given along with tithe. It is not the same as tithe. I, I, I said that before, but I just want to give you the scripture. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in the ordinance of the first fruits of grain and wine and oil, honey, all of the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly the... The tithe of everything. Notice they brought the first fruit in abundance and then the tithe. Now, I want to just make that clear because some people think it is the one and the same. No, it is not. So, it is first fruit is something you give. So that's the practice. Now, remember, I have, I have tried to be slow and giving both sides. While it's a free will offering... Nobody should be putting you on the cross or to crucify you because you, don't, you choose not to do it. It is also, a, as many scriptures as you will see, it's plain that God is saying, this is what I want you to do. Cain was given the same opportunity to correct himself. He said, if you do what is right, wouldn't you be considered? That's what God said to Cain. But Cain chose not to. He said, if you do wrong, sin lieth at your door. And like a lion, it is ready to pounce on you. That's what God said, Genesis 4. Very clear. All right? Our time is finished, so. What are the blessings? What do I gain? Because as a human being, you got to tell me. I cannot, you don't just tell me what to do, pastor. I, I need to know, that. Is there any, what is in it for me? Human beings, especially like Nigerians, we always like to hear that part of it. So here it is. At least, if for anything else, these are the reasons we're going to pray on. These are the prayer points as we begin to round up. Are you ready? The blessings of obedience as it regards to the first fruit. Number one, you enjoy God's, what I call, comprehensive insurance. What is the first blessing of the first fruit? To enjoy God's comprehensive insurance. You can understand that his own is not like the Nigerian own. That's the point I'm trying to make. God's comprehensive insurance. <clears throat> this is very interesting. So let me give you a scripture. Jeremiah 2.3. It's very easy to remember. Jeremiah 2.3. In fact, let's read from the very beginning because I'd like to make this clear to you. Jeremiah 2.3 is the key this thing. But let's read from the very beginning. Moreover, the word of the Lord came. God was lamenting how... Oh God, our time is finished. So I'm, I'm trying, trying to jump to this. God was lamenting how God... He, the love that, 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 that existed between him and his children, Israel. Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem. God says, Thou says, Lord, I remember. God said, I remember, I remember the kindness of your you, the love of your betrothal. You were so much after me. You went after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. When, when, you, when we were relating in that close relation, no, notice, 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 we are still talking about the first fruit, but what is God talking about here? He was talking about the relationship that existed between father and 
sons or children. So the first fruit, while we are talking about you are seeing it all in money and cash and transfer and everything, it is an indication of love and relationship. Go to the verse 3. Now you have the background. Israel at that time, because of the, the practice you are, you, you, you are, you are in, you, the, the way you are practicing this, the relationship you had with me, with, especially when as shown in, the, in, in your obedience, in your generosity in the first fruit, Israel itself was what? Holiness to the Lord. Israel was the first fruit of his increase. And whenever God says something is a first fruit, don't touch it. All that devour him will what? Will offend. Disaster will come upon them. Now, in those days when we carried this Bible like this, I would have said, keep your hand there and turn to Deuteronomy 32. You cannot fully... Because of time, I will not go into it, but you cannot fully understand what is being said here without going to Deuteronomy 32, which, again, is a more confusing scripture, but let me confuse you more. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8 and 9. When I say confuse, it's not to try to confuse it's try to make you want to study more. When the Most High divided, now listen to this, when the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when God separated the sons of Adam, this is way, way at the beginning, he set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the children of... He, he, now, go, when you go home, read these verses in other translation. Every translation will translate this particular, the last part of that eight verse according to the number of Israel, in according to the number of angels, according to the number of children of God, according to the number of different. Different translations have it. I have meditated on this for, for a long time. But God generally is saying, when he separated the boundaries of nations, as it is today, he did it according to the number of the children of God's, God's children whether they be Israel or sons of God or angels or whatever it is that different translations will tell you. Next verse helps us a bit. For the Lord's portion is what? And Jacob is the place of his inheritance. In other words, now look at, now look at me. In other words, now what do we mean God's comprehensive insurance is that when God divided the nations according to the boundaries of the people, he decided to take his own portion. It's the tithe for himself. Guess what God's tithe was? Out of the people in the ancient times. What? Israel. Remember that Jesus Christ is the first fruit. The first reason. Today, everyone who has come into Jesus Christ is become the Israel of God. You are God's first fruit. That is why anybody who touches you touches his eyes. If you understand, are you understanding this and say amen? At the that time, Israel was God's tithe, God's first fruit to be exact. That was what was being referred to by Jeremiah. And he said, if you touch Israel at that time, and that's why, come on, think about me. Think, think, about, think about this. Not too long ago, I was thinking about it. What were the other nations that existed at that time? Together with Israel, Ammonites, Jebusites, Amalekites, um, Moabites. How many of those ones exist? Why is it only one tribe still exists? Now, you may say, what about Egypt? Now, Egypt does not exist anymore. Remember that the Egypt of the Bible were black people. The people we have today are conquerors. Arabs that killed them, that occupying them. The Egypt, today's people are not the ancient people of Egypt. Please understand that. So God is here clearly saying, Israel is my portion. If you touch him, 
You touch me. I don't like these words that Jeremiah used. Disaster. Now, if that is the way God sees the first fruit, then what does that mean to you? In Christ, as it relates to all today, in Christ, we have become the Israel. God is ready to defend you, whether you, and you and I, we know it. That he is the only reason why we are here, right? He is the only one that protected us and kept us alive to this hour. If you agree with that, say amen. Yeah, that is the comprehensive insurance. The Bible is saying in Jeremiah 2, 2, uh, Jeremiah 2 3, it's saying he that touched him, you cannot say you are not guilty. He that devour him will offend. Now, let's replace that Israel with the first fruit. Therefore, the first fruit that belongs to God, if you devour it, if you take it, I, I don't want to complete the remaining. But when you begin to relate to God and in obedience and do these things, you, re you realize you have made certain statements and position in Christ. And God, com God's comprehensive insurance surrounds you. He protects you. There is no way anybody will touch you and escape scot-free. That person will have to answer to God. And I want to pray that anybody... Kabula cast kataporo bandi. Would you take a moment to pray that prayer right now? Anyone that may want to, in this year of mercy, consider even thinking about hurting you, whether they know it or not. Like, hey, anything, anyone will have to answer to God. Claim God's comprehensive insurance round about you, round about your business. Round about, that is why as a church we give also. So give as an individual, let your business be included because you are talking about a comprehensive insurance. He that touches him shall offend. Disaster is what comes to those who toy with God's first fruit. Don't touch it. Don't touch. Declare that protection round about you. Round about your family. Round about your business. As I gave mine, that's my prayer. I said, Lord, in 2020, uh, 2023, comprehensive insurance round about. When I'm on the way, when I'm in the car, when I'm in the plane, when I, whether I'm, I'm in the night or in the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessing number two. So, number one, and you, we enjoy God's comprehensive insurance. Number two, we enjoy God's overflowing blessings. God's enjoy God's overflowing blessings. I touched on it yesterday, so I'm not going to take too much again. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of of all, all your increase. I know there are some of us who are doing business in one area and we are now also doing some side business on the other side. Don't, be, don't say because I gave the first fruit in this area, you will forget conveniently the first fruit on the other side. Of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with them plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. God enjoying God's overflowing uh, blessings. And I want you to add 1 Samuel 2, 30 where God said he that honors me I will honor and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. That's what God said. So if we honor the Lord with the first fruit of our increase, when we honor him means not now. What, what, what does it mean, Pastor, when you say honor? It, it, it means not just bringing it and just giving it and shoving it and just walking away. But you follow the step, five step, the four step process I told you. You go to the place, you take it to the person, and then you um, say and then worship as you give. When you do it in that very way, okay, you are honoring. 
to honor somebody. It's not just, just going to go and pass, pass somebody and say, hey, how are you doing? And then pass away. No. Whenever the first fruit comes, do it with honor. Do it with worship. Do it Bible way. Okay, number three. Blessing number three. Protection for the rest of your resources or income. That is the third blessing we get in our obedience to follow the, following this step. Protection for the rest of the income or the business or the resources that you have. Romans 11.26 is a very popular scripture. It says, for if the first fruits be holy, then the whole lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. When we bring the first fruit to God, to honor God, like I said at the beginning, it represents the whole of the harvest. So if God receives your first fruit, that means the rest of your income, the rest of your business is consecrated in the same way. If God doesn't receive it, then that's a problem. But if you receive the first fruit, then you can be sure that uh, protection, his protection is over all of the rest of your business. <sighs> I am sure we are all aware of the fact that the enemy has devised a lot of different ways in stealing from us. It is a breakdown or something. It's one mistake there. It is one something the other. Police will stop you at the wrong place at the wrong time. You will do one thing. And then we sometimes lose a lot of things in a foolish way. When God's blessing is over us, which is taking me to the last um, blessing I want to dis discuss with you. The first is... Enjoying God's comprehensive insurance, number two, enjoying his overflowing uh, blessings, number two, protection for the rest of the business or the income res resources, um, income source, rather, where the first fruit is coming from. And then number four, impartation of God's blessing on our homes. An impartation, a release of God's blessing over your home. Ezekiel 44, 30. That's very, very interesting for me. The best of all the first fruits, sometimes it will be the choice or the first of the first fruit or the best. God is insisting, just telling us, the first, the first, 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 the best, what you consider first, bring it to me. Okay, don't keep it. So whichever language you use. The best of all of the first fruit of any kind and every sacrifice of any kind from all of your sacrifices shall be the priests. The priests. And you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal. And doing all of these things is for one purpose. And what is that? Read with me. To cause a blessing or some translator, other translation will say the blessing. So it's either a blessing or the blessing. No S, blessing. If you know Bible, Abraham's blessings are different from Abraham's blessing. There are two different things. Okay? We don't have the time to go into it. To cause, one of the translations said, to cause God's blessing to rest on your house. Most of the times, and this is how we end, most of the time, it is not just money we need from God or income. Or a check. Sometimes it does not matter how much big resources are coming in. It, it may not be much. But if there is no leakage in your house. Even the little that is coming. Can be able to do a lot of things. Anybody agree with me? Sometimes it is too many leakages. It's an uncle there. It's a brother there. It's one message from there. It's a breakdown from there. and all. Of, will you stand with me on your feet? Let's take this prayer on our feet. God had had enough of mercy on us. His mercy is not a license to continue in the wrong direction. First, let us pray for grace. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to knowing that the time is finished, I'm going to, we're going to do it very quickly. First, we receive grace to do it right. Knowing as human beings, we will still have struggle with certain things, 
But from, go, from now on, we cannot say we don't know. Let's pray for the grace. Lord, give me grace to be able to do it right this from, that, from this moment. Thank you.